want to wish all of you joining us from around the world a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And thank you, thank you so much for giving us an hour of your time today. And thank you for joining us for this overview webinar for the Wharton School's upcoming online program, Scaling a Business, How to Build a Unicorn. We are so thrilled to have all of you here with us today. We are also thrilled uh, today to have with us today our amazing program leader, Chris Chung, is on the line with us today. He's going to be taking us through the weeks and modules of this amazing program. We are so lucky to have him with us here today. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Mark. Thanks so much for hosting, and welcome to everyone who has, has joined this, uh, this webinar. But I, I'm a strategy consultant for a company out of New York, uh, but I'm based in San Francisco called Genesis Block. It's like a, um, uh, like a Bain, BCG, or McKinsey, but specifically for the blockchain Web3 space. Um, I've been, I was one of the original program leaders within this course, um, how to build a unicorn, um, mainly because I was invited um, to be one of the original program leaders, help develop the slide decks, and to work with uh, my old professor, Professor Ethan Malik, when I was back at school many, many years ago. And he was, he was one of the, uh, the, the class favorites, like the materials in his, and we took him before he had his book and, and before he had all his white papers. So I encourage you, if you want to do a deeper dive into the course materials and understand like where he's coming from, um, go, go get his book, read the white papers online and similar stuff goes for um, the other professor, Professor Alon. So. I highly encourage you to do that. You know, really looking forward to this next run, which I think will be the fourth run. So it's pretty new, this course, to, to, um, to have any uh, large data sample sizes. So for the first question, how long have you been running this program? Um, I've been running it from the beginning. Now there's three program leaders because it's grown so much. Um, and what are success rates that you're seeing? We don't have any, we don't keep any data on the success rates, except that's anecdotal. And with um, one class graduating next week, and I think there's two previous cohorts. Um, I know they're working on their startups. Hopefully you'll be hearing about unicorns happening straight out of Professor Alon and Professor Malik's course. We don't have that data yet, but stay tuned, stay tuned. I'm sure it'll be announced on, on LinkedIn. Chris, thank you so much for that. And don't worry, friends, I'm going to be handing you back to Chris as quickly as possible because he is the expert and he's the one who can best tell you everything about everything you're going to learn in each week, uh, in each module of this amazing program. So thank you all so much for joining us today. We're so lucky to have Chris here. Thank you, Chris, for being here today. But before I hand things over to Chris, first, we have to ask ourselves, why learn scaling a business, how to build a unicorn through Wharton? online. Well, in short, Wharton is not only one of the best business schools in the world, it also happens to be the first collegiate business school in the world, founded in 1881 after a generous donation by Joseph Wharton uh, of the famed Bethlehem Steel Corporation. And the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, uh, one, of the, one of the colleges in the famed Ivy League, is recognized globally for intellectual leadership and ongoing innovation across every major discipline of business education. With one of the most published business school faculties, Wharton creates economic and social value all around the world, but also with its broad global community, including 5,000 undergrad, MBA, and doctoral students, more than 13,000 participants in their executive education programs annually, and, a, and an amazing alumni network of almost 100,000 graduates. And with more than 50 online programs wish to choose and more being added all the time, more than 3 million learners worldwide, just like you, have accessed Wharton online programming taught by Wharton's world-class faculty. So we hope that you will become part of that larger global Wharton family uh, through your participation in this Wharton online program. And to best define uh, to best define the mission and the attitude of Wharton and Wharton Online, we have this great quote here uh, from the Wharton School's Dean, Dean Erica James, uh, who just celebrated her two-year anniversary as the Dean of the Wharton School. 
And it really also perfectly captures not just Wharton and Wharton Online, but also this specific program, uh, Scaling a Business, How to Build a Unicorn. Today's environment means you can't afford to simply respond to or manage change. The best businesses, and that includes startups, all businesses, the best businesses must anticipate change and even intentionally create change so as not to become complacent. And at Wharton, we are excited to be the partner to help you get there. So we really hope that you will become part of the global Wharton family with this program through Wharton Online. So first, let's talk a little bit about this specific program, about scaling a business. Uh, and the truth of the matter is achieving unicorn status, uh, getting your company to have a valuation of a billion dollars or more is no simple feat. But if you prepare for that success to happen early, you can ensure that your company will join that unicorn rank. And that's a much larger feat uh, than a lot of people probably think, especially in this era where in the news, all we ever hear about is someone starting a startup in their garage and then it gets bought for a billion dollars, $2 billion. We hear those stories all the time in the media. What doesn't necessarily get as much attention is some of the statistics at the bottom, which is that uh, approximately 90% of all startups fail, and only a slim majority of startups uh, achieve profitability. So only about 40% of startups achieve profitability, 90% of startups fail, and there are currently more than 900 unicorns globally of billion dollar companies. But that's, that's, not, a huge, that's not a huge community. That's a, that's a collective value of approximately $3 trillion, uh, and that's something to look up to. But uh, you need to be preparing for that to maybe achieve that kind of success. You need to be preparing for that early on. And so this program is designed to help you do that. This program is designed to help business leaders and entrepreneurs unlock the secrets of unicorn success. Take all the secrets of those 900 plus companies and discover what it really takes to scale companies up to billion dollar valuation. So you're going to learn the characteristics of a unicorn, how to recognize one, as well as explore the challenges that come with building and scaling a unicorn to help you grow your own startup or business initiative. So we have two amazing faculty on this program. Chris already mentioned one of them, uh, one of his favorite professors from school, uh, Professor Ethan Mollick, the Ralph J. Roberts Distinguished Faculty Scholar and Associate Professor of Management at Wharton, and also the Academic Director of Wharton interactive. Uh, so Professor Malik studies and teaches innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, he's the author of The Unicorn's Shadow, Combating the Dangerous Myths that Hold Back Startups, Founders, and Investors. Uh, his papers have been published in numerous academic journals and have won multiple awards. Uh, prior to his time in academia, Professor Malik had his own startup company, and he currently advises a number of startups and organizations. He is also uh, co-authored a book on the intersection between video games and business uh, that was named by the LA, ALA as one of the top 10 business books of the year. Uh, Professor Malik has multiple degrees uh, from both MIT and Harvard. And we also don't just have one amazing professor, we actually have two. Professor Gad Alon, uh, Dr. Gad Alon, is the Jeffrey A. Keswin Professor and Professor of Operations, Information, and Decisions and the director of the management and technology program at Penn. Uh, he received his PhD from Columbia Business School and holds multiple degrees from the Israeli Institute of Technology. Uh, his research interests include operations management in general, but also service operations and operations strategy in particular. Uh, Professor Alon has been studying models of information sharing among firms and customers, both in service and retail settings, as well as competition models in the service industry. He serves on the ed editorial board of several journals, has won multiple awards as an educator. He is also the co-founder of For Class, a platform that enables professors to drive higher student engagement and accountability in their classrooms. So what are some of the key program takeaways? What are the some, key, some of the key takeaways that you're gonna get from this program? Well, in short, this program, Scaling a Business, How to Build a Unicorn, explores the concept of unicorns from what they look like and how they prepare for growth to how they deal with failure and crisis along the way. Because we know that there will be bumps in the road. Even the most successful company um, has to encounter some hardship and adversity along the way. So what this program will enable you to do is you will come away from this program with the ability to identify the characteristics of unicorn organizations, you will be able to design a well-structured business experiment. 
You will be able to analyze organizational resources and constraints to scale technology. You will be able to examine the processes and structure of a growing organization. You'll be able to examine effective frameworks and metrics of an organization's readiness to scale. And you'll also be able to evaluate the personnel and cultural needs within your organization so that you'll be able to scale it up to become a unicorn. So with that, it is my pleasure to hand things over to Chris Chung, who's going to take us week by week, module by module, and tell us all about this incredible program. So Chris, take it away. Appreciate you, Mark. This awesome overview of the professors, the background, and just really going through the key takeaways. Um, we've, we've had several students reach back out to us via LinkedIn and really just really thank us for forcing them into um, the content, the homework assignments, especially module two's um, homework assignment, which is the longer assignment. Um, and that is the one that, that myself and the other two program leaders will get involved in grading. Um, the other assignments are graded by our, our, our learning team. Uh, so I wanted to go through just at a high level, um, module one, we will be going over a lot of the uh, statistics behind what makes a unicorn. Right. I mean, we all know the academic definition of it is you get to a private market valuation of a billion dollars in USD or greater. Um, but what are the characteristics that make those select group of companies um, different from the other ones that didn't make it? So we, we'll break that down. And there's some myths. Uh, there's some, I guess, uh, uh, little known facts that are not as marketable that you'll hear about in this one, and that comes from the professor's research. Uh, module two is the one where we have the long form, longer form homework. Um, experimentation is another way of saying, pivoting off your product market fit. If you are in the startup world or, or you know, you're a former failed founder like myself, you, know, you understand that product market fit is super important. And if you can't get Traction, number one, you're not gonna get initial seed funding or series A funding. Number two, scaling is difficult because if you don't have that product market fit, what are you gonna scale off? That is the base of everything when you, when you scale. So we'll talk through that. Um, we'll talk about having, number one, a thesis, your idea, testing, testing it into a hypothesis and breaking it into the different variable components so you understand where you want to scale. And we'll talk about a couple of you know, huge uh, mistakes in scaling, companies that scale too quickly, right? That, but it ended up being a success like Tesla. I mean, they scaled way too fast, spent a bunch of investor money. Um, they were a success story, not because of their process, but because of you know, their, their, their leader and, and the market. We'll talk about companies like Blue Apron, I'm sure a lot of people here on this webinar tried it. They scaled too quickly. You know, it just, the platform was overcrowded. They could not service the needs of the customers and what we call the customer lifetime value, how much money people spend on the platform. Um, they got a ton of customer growth, but the lifetime value of that customer was, was short, it was short. So, and then the next module, module three, is one of the one of my favorites. Um, how to break it into the components? How to forecast moving forward? And we all know, you know. And, and I mentioned before, I'm a multi multi times failed founder. Another reason why I think I was selected to be a program leader in this course because I didn't have this as a guy. I didn't have these six modules. And the typical error that I made, and and you'll see in the professor's study, we scaled the wrong time. Uh, we scale the wrong thing. So how do you think through identifying the, the right resources and components you want to scale first in the correct sequential order? And, and how do you think through that? And we'll talk through different frameworks of forecasting because none of us here have a crystal ball, right? So we are all making guesses based on our internal probability, probability analysis. And I know a lot of people here are going to ask about data. There is no data, especially if you're making a new market. You know, I, you know my, my main job is in the blockchain web three world. 
there is very little data in that world. Just like in the late 90s, there was very little data on, on, on software and the internet, you know, in the, in the, in the first web 1.0 days. So we'll talk through from a general strategic framework how to forecast forward. And if your market is so nascent that you can't even forecast forward, we'll talk about backcasting, which is a different way of thinking through where you want to get to and understanding where you need to invest your, uh, your time and, and capital in the beginning. Module four is once you identify everything, you have the correct frameworks moving forward, how do you lean into it? How do you um, create the start of formal processes in your organization? You might be a small team in the beginning, uh, which is normal because you don't want to overweight your, 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 your capital, um, your, your capital with, with unnecessary overhead, which also is not good for your, you know, whether you're going from C to A or A to B rounds, you need to show um, controlled growth and strategic uh, adding of the overhead. So we're gonna talk through the processes around that and how to scale up to what we call, you know, early stage to growth stage. So early stage is typically your C round and A rounds and your growth stage is typically B round and and then your series C. Although there's a lot of startups hitting their series F, G, and H these days, but nonetheless, I mean, typically it's A, B, C, and you're supposed to exit. And module five is probably the one um, that we get the most questions on because it's the most math heavy. So if you're a numbers math, math person, you're not gonna, you're gonna love it. But for the, for the general, um, population of students, we tend to get the most questions on the metrics and financials piece. This is more of a, un, this is more of a deeper dive into the previous four modules and how to think it through from a data analytics uh, uh, dashboard type approach. So at this point in your, in your startup, you're gonna have data coming in. So how do you put that into a data dashboard? What, what are gonna be your, um, your objectives and key results that you're going to track, which is the qualitative mostly and a little bit quantitative north star for your organization alongside your KPIs, the key performance indicators that you're going to track, you know, ideally on a daily basis, if not weekly, and at the very least monthly basis, because, you know, going back to, you know, our Dean's quote, it's a cha change is inevitable and you have to pivot with the change whether or not you have that product market fit or not because your competitors if you do have if you do have that product market fit competitors will come into your space um, and so you have to pivot to battle i mean you have to get into more defensive stance think through your market share how to defend it how to expand your moat throw some sharks and crocodiles in there you have to think through that and that's that change is going to be inevitable especially if you're in a very successful space so we're gonna talk through the data dashboard that you're gonna form within your startup to track, to help aid in your decision making. In, in, in the startup world, in the private market world, it's not as metric focused as in the public markets because there's just less data. Uh, that being said, you have to still be quantitative, but there's a huge qualitative component to it, which we'll also think through via frameworks that the two professors will discuss. And speaking of moats, if companies come in and completely copycat you because it's not a defensible business you have, there is a way to maintain a moat, and that is through your, through your culture. So the way you incentivize, the way you hire, train, you know, form a team. You know, I like to use um, a couple of different examples on module six because we, we like to leave our students with this final module talking about culture because Everyone's focused on the business and the customers and your product or platform. But once you reach a certain stage, you have to start building your culture. Um, I'll give you an example. Southwest Airlines, it's, it's talked about in many business schools as being, you know, the epitome of, of how culture can be a business mode. If you really look at Southwest, it's not that cheap compared to other airlines. You know, I don't think the customer service is that much better. I think, you know, I, I, I really think it's a commodity compared to flying other airlines, which I prefer to do because they have newer planes. 
That being said, Southwest still is one of the most profitable airlines because of their culture. If you really do a deep dive and dissect their business, they don't do anything better than the rest except for their culture. So it is a moat and it can echo through many, many years after the fact, after the CEO, that's the original founder of Visionary Leaves, the DNA and the imprint of the culture echoes into the future. So you want to think through that, lean into that, because that will be very important moving forward. And, you know, I'm a big Golden State Warriors fan. Um, there is a culture that was established, you know, with the Golden State Warriors that makes us win four championships in eight years. It's not, it's not, it's not a secret that they have a different type of locker room. And it happens in the NFL, other sports, other organizations. So we're just saying take those best practices, build it into your quote unquote corporate locker room in the in the startup world early on. So we do a lot of, um, we'll talk a lot about real examples because it, it, it's not just all theory in this course. We will talk specifically about companies that went through the private markets like Blue Apron, Amazon, Casper, Tesla. I know some of those were acquired. Some of those are publicly traded now, but we'll talk through how they had to make decisions. And we like to, we like to talk through Decision arithmetic, which is the easy stuff that you have to make decisions on your business on how to pivot and change, and decision calculus, which is the harder, more complex decisions that you have to take into not only, not only your qualitative feedback, but your quantitative data and just make a gut decision from. So we'll talk through on how these leaders failed in hindsight, right? Because hindsight's a clear sight. They didn't know at the time and how they succeeded based on specific things we're going to unlock in this course through the content. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Let me tell you a little bit about what your experience is going to be like in this program through Wharton Online. So, you know, there are a lot of on, there are a lot of online learning companies out there that are saying, you know, like, oh, just watch all these videos on YouTube. And it's basically the same thing as a, as a dynamic education, but we know that that's not true. So we try to bring you a dynamic learning experience one in which you will feel like you are part of a classroom you will really feel like you are part of a cohort you're not just learning coincidentally at the same time as people from all over the world you are learning with people from all over the world and we do that in a lot of different ways we also understand that there are many different ways that adult learners uh, prefer to connect to knowledge and content so with that uh, there are many different ways in which we've made this a really nimble and dynamic program. First of all, we have uh, discussion boards. They're going to be weekly discussions um, moderated by our program leader in which you are all going to be able to exchange ideas with each other. Uh, and you will all be able to benefit uh, not just from your work experience, but also your industrial and global diversity. Uh, you might find yourself in a cohort with someone who's starting up this, who has a very similar startup to you, but in a completely different country, or someone who's in a very different startup, but they're right down the street from you. And maybe you'll actually be able to partner on something. So you'll find that that diversity of the global community, the industrial diversity, but also the work experience. So the people who are just starting out in their careers are going to be in this program and people who have 10, 15, 20 years of experience are going to be in this program as well. And you're going to be able to bring all that insight, all that knowledge, all that wisdom into this program through those discussion boards. We're also going to have those industry examples, like we mentioned, taking real world examples as they're happening um, and be able to bring that right into the program. You're also going to have assignments in which you're going to be able to consider solutions for yourselves. Uh, it's not just about learning about other mistakes, other people's mistakes, but what would you have done in that scenario? And so we're going to have those assignments, uh, live office hours. So you're going to be able to have office hours with Chris and going to be able to talk over things with him uh, and basically have an extended Q&A uh, through those live office hours. Try it activities. We're going to be able to bring your knowledge to life with engaging and practical exercises, but also we also have knowledge checks in this program. Now, some people look at that and they say to themselves, uh oh, that's a code word for a test. And I really hated tests when I was a kid. Well, here's the thing I really want you to think of those knowledge checks as another form of support because the point of this program is for you, is for you to be able to take all this knowledge and apply it 
not just in the next month after you take this program, but the next year, the next five years, the next 10 years. We want you to take this knowledge and be able to carry it with you for the rest of your career. And so those knowledge checks are there so that you can feel confident. You know, you're receiving all this information all at once. And sometimes it feels like you're learning, you know, out of a fire hose. And so those knowledge checks are there so that you can feel reassured, hey, I am processing this. I am retaining this knowledge. I am understanding this knowledge. Those knowledge checks are there for you. Those are not forms of judgment. Those are forms of support. So all of these things together uh, create a really dynamic learning experience that we know you're going to love. So in short, what can you expect every single week? Well, our students commit four to six hours per week on this program over the course of six weeks of content. That is the range, by the way, that's not an average. So when, when I say four to six hours per week, that doesn't mean one student takes two hours and one student takes 10 hours. Four to six hours per week truly is the time commitment on this program. And that first thing there, bite-sized learning techniques. Some people hear that and they say, whoa, what is that referring to? We understand that all of us have crazy schedules and we have very busy lives. So we understand that four to six hours per week in a traditional academic environment would probably be a two hour class two or three times a week. That's what four to six hours per week looks like in traditional academia. But the whole point of being able to learn online is that it's flexible. And so to help you with that flexibility, we've broken down our video lectures to five minutes long, seven minutes long. Some of them are only three minutes long. And so as a result, even if you only have 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there, 20 minutes there, you know, after the past two and a half years, we all had, many of us were working from home while we had children learning from home or we had very young children at home. Uh, so with that, we've made this as flexible as possible so that even if you only have five minutes here and there, if those five minutes here and there add up to four to six hours per week, Anywhere you can fit it in, we've made that possible for you. And again, uh, we do this through real, real world applications, assignments, knowledge checks, peer learning, discussions, live office hours, and frequent course communications with Chris uh, to be able to guide you through the experience uh, so that you always know that you're not, so that you always feel supported, you always feel encouraged. Uh, and we're super proud of our program leaders. We're super proud of Chris and it does such amazing work on this program. And on top of all that, Upon successful completion of the program, you will earn a verified digital certificate of completion from the Wharton School, and this is an amazing feather in your cap. It's not just a great way to connect to past members of um, previous cohorts, but also it's really great in interviews uh, to be able to just put this on your resume or your CV and come in and say, hey, I have this amazing knowledge from the Wharton School. Because also, like we said, more than 3 million people around the world have accessed Wharton online programming. So you never know, you might be in an interview situation where someone on the other side of the table has also taken a program through Wharton online. And immediately you're going to have a shared experience. You're going to have a common vernacular that you didn't know you had walking into that interview room. And also not just past members of cohorts will you be able to um, link up with on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, but also this cohort's going to keep, this program is going to keep running. So you never know who might take this program in a future cohort. So you'll be able to connect with them as well. Thanks to this verified digital certificate of completion from the Wharton School. And it's a great feather in your cap. And a lot of our students find this to be an, an amazing, an amazing marketing tool, an amazing networking tool. Scaling a business, how to build a unicorn. Is this only for tech companies or would this apply to a non-tech company like a multifamily office? It applies to non-tech companies. Now, we always have the, the myth that you can only get to a billion dollar uh, unicorn status if you have a scalable business in the tech world. Software is more scalable. We understand that. Platform businesses can scale quicker. Um, that being said, we've had several students go through the program that had non-tech companies like manufacturing businesses. Um, they were suppliers, uh, a couple of mining companies. So these... these um, the tenants in the, in the course can apply to anything as long as you are still in the private markets. So a multifamily office where you're going to be allocating capital. Um, uh, that was where I was a few years back. And in multifamily offices, you do want to look at your, your portfolio and see how much is allocated to, you know, real estate versus public equities versus private markets, you know, and private equity is a big piece of it. And, Venture is a subset of private equity. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, so, uh, 
Does this course go into how to access capital through initial investment rounds and how that process works, how to get in front of the right groups and funds? So that seems like the same kind of question to me. Yeah. Do we go over yeah. pitching sessions and connecting yeah. with investors? We, 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 we don't simulate pitching sessions with investors, but we will talk through the content on how you have to think through via frameworks and principles in, in, in your business and what variable you want to scale sequentially. That's very important. So we won't simulate the pitching sessions in this course. There is another course that Mark and I do called Entrepreneurship Accelerator. That is another program. It's, I think it's twice the length, 11 weeks versus six here. And we do all that stuff. And at the end, there is a business competition um, for, I think, I forgot, it's 50,000 or, or something. So you're going, you're going through the motions and we do have mock pitches as a part of the course. Um, specifically, we will, there isn't a module specifically on breaking down the investment rounds. That being said, it's super important to the goal of the, of the, of the course title, which is get, getting to a billion dollar unicorn status in the private market. So myself being a, a early stage a strategy consultant for Blockchain Web3 and other program leader, Henry, who I partner up with, um, Henry and I basically lead all the office hours and we split them. But Henry's also a consultant in the, in the fintech space doing the same thing. So as everyone is posting on the discussion boards and you have, obviously you can direct message both of us, um, and while we lead the office hours, we touch heavily on how to access capital through and how to think through C versus C plus versus A, B, and C, and the differences in between them and how the course content will be uh, pivoted slightly from round to round until you can get to a billion dollar status. So we'll talk, we'll be talking through that on the office hours. We're going to get this question a lot. Can you move the office hours so it's convenient for my lunch hour? We cannot. Um, we are locked into specific office hours once a week, along with one faculty session. Once they're announced, they're locked in. Uh, it's, it's pertinent on Henry's schedule, my schedule, the professor's schedule. And this course is asynchronous, just like everything at work, which means everything is done um, via the Canvas platform. All the slide decks that we'll, that we'll use during the uh, office hours. And office hours are also recorded, so you can go back and watch that. And if you have any questions you want to address directly, ask them on the discussion board. One of your classmates might be able to answer it. If not, directly message Henry or myself. We do have a third program leader, Athalia, who's in the background that's going to be assisting with um, grading and stuff, but she won't be on the office hours specifically. So we have a lot of support. So just continue to reach out and we'll be touching on all your questions, all your content that, that are requested. Thank you so much, Chris, for that detailed answer. Uh, next question is wondering if this program will help with my NFT marketplace and metaverse blockchain startup. Uh, and Chris, I think blockchain, that is definitely your bread and butter, right? Yeah, that's my, that's my you know, regular full-time gig and I teach at Wharton for the three courses on, on a part-time basis. We will be, the tenants in the course are so applicable to uh, Web3 blockchain. You know, I've taken a lot of the content from this course and, you know, and brought it to my clients. Obviously I'm not taking the video content, recording it and sending it to my clients at, you know, at, uh, at, at Genesis Block, but we are, some of the tenants are so key because on an NFT marketplace or platform, it's all about ramping up your users. It's about that S curve. It's about the adoption and how to think through that and scale up appropriately. And as you take funding from the earliest rounds, um, whether it's via your token generation event, whether it's through equity investments, you have to think through a lot of the frameworks we go through in this course. Because in the end, the investors and the psychology behind their, you know, behind their eyes when they look at your business, it's going to be the same, whether it's it's SaaS or, you know, or blockchain Web three, specifically uh, NFT marketplaces, which I've seen come across my desk all the time. And if you're going to the uh, NFT conference in LA this weekend, uh, hit me up on LinkedIn. I, I will be there. Thank you so much, Chris. That was awesome. Um, 
is this course going to be like a modular section by section? Will it be a test for completion? Uh, we have knowledge text, Chris. The material is released modularly. You don't get six weeks of content all at once, and then you're supposed to go through it. Like it is released one week at a time. Uh, but can you tell them, uh, tell us a little bit more about um, how you get that certificate of completion? What is required? Is there some sort of test and so forth? Yeah, um, the there are knowledge checks and there are assignments that are due. Um, there will be one assignment that's graded, and that's in module two, and that is the business experimentation. You know, it's, it's, it's really just a longer form uh, business plan that you would typically submit if you were to go for, you know, bank funding, right? We don't do that in the startup world, but it's similar to that. That's graded by Henry and Ophelia and myself. So the cohort will be split into three different sections and your section leader, I'll be section A, Henry's B, Ophelia's uh, a C if it spills over into a C section and we'll be grading those. and. Um, that will be, you have to pass that with at least, it's out of eight points. You gotta have at least get a 75%, so six points out of eight. What we've seen in the past is people just leave certain parts of the homework blank and then we can't give you credit for that. So at least write why you're leaving it blank because at least it shows us why you're thinking through that answer and that you've actually read it and you've actually applied to your business. If it doesn't apply, tell us why it doesn't apply. That'd be the tip on, on that homework. Everything else is just very easy. It's just go through the motions, answer the question, sometimes the multiple choice, and you get credit for it. Thank you so much, Chris. All right, after the program, are we gonna be part of Wharton alumni? You'll be part of that larger global 3 million Wharton community, but this is not a degree program. So you will not be listed as Wharton alumni. Uh, there, I don't believe there are any Wharton alumni benefits uh, that go with this uh, program. So this is just with Wharton Online. So that you will not, upon completion of this program, you'll get that certificate of completion, but uh, you will not be counted as part of the um, larger Wharton, that 100,000 Wharton alumni. That's that's not with uh, Wharton Online. Uh, Chris, did I say anything wrong there? Is there anything we need to expand on that? No, that that is correct. Um, if you're a Wharton alum, you, you get like this thing called the pen key. And it's like your lifetime, like, um, log in to the alumni resources. So, and I believe you have to be a graduate of the undergrad Wharton program or the, or the MBA program at Wharton to get into that. I don't think the uh, Wharton online um, gets you a pen key. Awesome, thank you so much, Chris. How do we use artificial intelligence inside the Wharton School of Methodology and the languages of programming? AIML. I mean, that's a, that's a sector of, that's a sec sector component of, of the startup markets. So if you're going to go for AI ML, a lot of the tenants in the course will apply and scaling it, scaling it up. Um, but we don't specifically talk about any industry within this course. E even like tech, we don't say, you know, all tech, deep tech, space tech, whatever. We don't go into industry specific. This is a general course on how to scale up because scaling is how people fall flat on their face when you try to get to a unicorn status. So everything will apply. You said there's one live webinar with our faculty, correct? Yes. So during that time, is there going to be time for like a Q and A? Will, will our students have access to the faculty for any questions and suggestions? Um, it sounds like there's a lot of interest, I, you know, I assume the live webinar is mostly for course content and class content, but there does seem to be some interest in whether or not uh, the faculty is going to be available for uh, our students' own business ventures. Uh, in the past, have Q&As gone in that direction or have they mostly just stuck to course content? Course content. Um, nice. In, in the Entrepreneurship Accelerator course, another one thrown by Word Online, that is the one where you get to access faculty and the program leaders specifically for your business. In this one, this is a generalized uh, course on scaling to a high valuation of a billion dollar US. So they won't be, they won't serve as um, specific business con consultants for your particular stage of your company. If that's your question. But we will touch on it immensely, um, but it won't be directly focused on your business. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. So how do you quickly get to the point of launch if it's ready and no investment to date, but proven? So 
I guess this is one of the questions that we're going to cover uh, because we're going to be covering different industries and how uh, we're going to be talking about different startups and like what happens to them. But do we have an example of like someone of a product? It's ready to go. It's a proven product, but it doesn't have necessarily any money behind it. Do we have any examples like that? I think that's what Adam's looking for. Yeah, we have um, we have plenty of examples in the course of, of stages like that when you don't have money behind it and you're ready to go raise and how to how to think through it. So um, a lot of the course content has come from obviously successful startups that raise money. So following along their guide path will help you gain some edges in your investment pitches. Although we won't be specifically doing coaching and mock pitches and all that stuff, the best practices are here in this course. Awesome, thank you so much, Chris. Um, so Chris, uh, so for our students in previous cohorts, is there another Wharton online program after this one? I mean, it sounds like we have lots of students that fit that entrepreneurship accelerator program to a T, but uh, after in previous cohorts, since you've been with this program since the beginning, uh, yeah. is, is there a Wharton online program that some of our students like naturally do next? Like, is there a, like maybe not necessarily an official follow-up, but do you find anecdotally that many of our students then go on to do another Wharton online program? I don't know anecdotally. Um, I know, I know when they when they leave the course, a lot of them have like a, a more solidified business plan, and they're probably working on their startup. You know, um, where they go off and take another course. Thank you so much, Chris. Okay, so I think I have time to squeeze in one more question. My company is in the pre-growth stage. I'm interested in learning early about how to build a unicorn. As I definitely want my company to grow. Um, however, about listening about the other entrepreneurship course, I'm wondering which course I should I enroll now. Any recommendations? So, Chris, what's what's your recommendation? Since you know, since our our startup, uh, all our students, they are also entrepreneurs. So, um, if they're kind of caught in between, can you give any insight into uh, helping make a decision? This course is how you scale up, how to get to that status, right? And in the other course, it's maybe a little bit earlier when you're kind of thinking it through. That being said, there's tremendous overlap between the two courses. The rhythm is different. This one's more focused on frameworks and decision-making. And obviously because the two professors are completely different uh, because remember all the professors teach undergrads and business school students at the Wharton School. So they're taking a chunk of their, of their courses and putting it into a bite-sized six-week course here or an 11-week course in the other one. And the other one does come with the, with the business plan competition at the end. So you get to get coached on your pitch and all that stuff. Um, we don't do capital interest investors, but it does help you go through the process uh, over there. And it's longer, slower. This one's more like high level, um, just really, just really focused on scaling up and getting to that valuation. Thank you so much, Chris. That is a perfect note to end on. Friends, we have unfortunately hit the top of the hour, so I've got to let everybody go. Program support is putting that link back up in the chat box that you can click on to register for this program, scaling a business, how to build a unicorn. So please go ahead, click on that link that just popped up in the chat box so that you can join the next cohort of this program. I want to thank Chris Chung, our amazing program leader, so much for his knowledge, his wisdom, his time. Chris, thank you so much. It was a pleasure being with you today. Thank you all. Thanks again, Mark, for hosting. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much, Chris. And thank you. Thank all of you who joined us today from all around the world. Thank you so much for your time. We know that your time is precious. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to send them at any time to wharton at emeritus.org. Again, that's wharton at emeritus.org. We can't wait to see all of you. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye, everyone.